So this piece of cardio equipment is probably the most recognizable in, in almost every gym around the world. The treadmill, it's great for low impact walking on an incline to a jog to a sprint. So I'm just going to show you now how to set this up. When you first got the treadmill, you'll press start or quick start. Then we have various options on here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to increase the speed and we're just going to do it to a slow, steady walk. So maybe we're going to put that to around about 2.5 miles an hour. From there, we can either increase or decrease the incline. So if we want to walk uphill, we'll simply press the incline up button and we're going to take that up to level three. Studies show that walking on an incline can burn up to twice as many calories as you do when you're walking on a flat. And a treadmill is a great way for you to come in, warm up, cool down, or even do a full cardio-based workout. That's a demonstration of a walk. If we were going to go into a slight jog, we'll just put the treadmill up to about 5.3 miles an hour, which will just force you into a slight run. Once you've done that, it's really simple. You can either slow it down and go down to a slow walk again, or if at that point you want to stop the treadmill, just simply press the stop button, or in an emergency, pull the cord off, which will completely stop the treadmill right there. Right guys, we're going to move on, bent over, incline, rear, lateral raise. We've set the bench around about 45 degrees. Now the bench is just going to be used to place our chest across the top of it. So, put a slight bend in my legs, Rest my chest on the top of the bench and then roll my shoulders slightly over the top. All I'm going to do now is keep the dumbbells with the palms facing the way they are. And then lift. And I'm imagining there's a little bit of string on my elbows. And it's my elbows that are lifting to the sky, not my hands. And that way I can keep the maximum emphasis on the rear delts. Now the rear delts they often get forgotten about when you're, when you're prescribing a shoulder workout or when you're training the shoulders and the suit that's overlooked. There's a massive importance to train these because it gives you a full round shoulder. Right guys, upright rows. Now, a lot of people make a mistake with this and they put the hands close together and pull the bar really high up, which puts emphasis on the traps rather than the delts. So the way that I like to do this is I like to take my hands on a wide grip. I like to lean forward ever so slightly. And then what I like to do is bring the bar away from my body by about two or three inches and pull that up as far as I can and return it back down again. And can you see, because my hands are wide, it restricts how far I can pull it up, which keeps maximum contraction onto my delts as opposed to enforcing it to go on to my traps. Now, another thing I want to show you here is I'm letting the bar hang in my fingers there. So I'm going to show you as I grab, grab the bar now. So as I grab it wide, I'm letting the bar hang inside there. And as I'm pulling that up, I'm keeping the pull coming through my fingers, which is creating emphasis onto my delts. Okay guys, next up is a side lateral raise. It's a standing side lateral raise, but we're going to brace ourselves against this bench. Now the reason for that is just to be really strict with our form. A lot of people when they're doing a, a standing side lateral raise, they'll swing themselves like that. By bracing ourselves against this bench, we can't swing. So it's a really strict exercise. Now, one thing I want you to do here is as you're bringing them up, I want you to imagine you're pouring a kettle by pouring that kettle, you can't take your hands too high, which keeps the maximum emphasis on the delts. And this is a side lateral raise, remember, it's not a front raise. Hence why 
the range of motion and the form is the way it is. So that's how to do a standing side lateral raise with strict form. Okay guys, so next exercise is to target the front delts. And I'm going to use the EZ bar. Now, I like to use the standing preacher curl as a backrest. You can use a bench, it's completely up to you. But taking the EZ bar in a close grip position, we brace our back, our lower back against the preacher curl machine. Then what we do is we take it from about our chin, between our chin and our mouth, and we push that up. Now what we don't do is we don't come back like that. What we do is we come down and up and away to keep that emphasis on targeting the front delts. Now, it's quite a short range of motion in what you're doing, which keeps maximum stress on the front delts. And you're imagining you're pushing. Now, notice how far my arms come down. My tricep is pretty much parallel with the ground. Oh. It's really important that you get your hand position right. Don't take that too far down. So you roll your shoulders, keep it to about that position. So almost so that part there is about parallel with the ground and drive that up away from you. Don't go behind your head, go in front of your head. A good point to get to that actually while I'm there is to keep your eyes on the bar, which if it comes out of sight, you can't see it. So keep looking at the bar, which will keep you in the correct position. Okay, so next up is the standing shoulder press, also known as a military press. We're using a straight barbell. The first thing to note here is the position of a feet. People do this in two separate ways and it's generally whichever way is comfortable for you. I like to do mine with my feet in line, shoulder width apart. Ash actually prefers to do hers where she stands with her right leg forward and her left leg back. It just allows her to drive them last couple of reps. So for this video, she'll put her foot position in that way. Again, you can put it either way. So we're gonna take this bar up. Now, as she starts to press this, She's coming down, so the bar is just below her nose, and she's taking it up to squeeze. Now, if we go to the side, we'll note her elbow position on this as well, because what a lot of people do is, as they bring this down, they bring the elbows like that, which isn't right. You need to bring them elbows forward and sit in the back part of your arms. So as we press that up, we come down and up, and if you look at the, the line of motion, the bar is pretty much going straight up and straight down. And that's because she's got her elbows in the perfect position. Now, this is an underrated exercise and it's great for overall shoulder development. You can either do this in a Smith machine or with a straight bar, it's entirely up to you. There's machines out there which will replicate the same exercise. But personally, I love to do this the old school way with a barbell standing in a position and driving that weight up. Okay guys, next up is a dumbbell shoulder shrug. So many people get this exercise wrong and I'm gonna show you the way that I like to do it, which really does help target them traps. So when we take the dumbbells, what a lot of people do is they take the dumbbells at the side and they come up and they roll the shoulders. Now that is completely wrong and can massively lead to an injury. So what I like to do is I like to Start with my feet about shoulder width apart. Place the dumbbells just inside my quad. Now I've got a slight bend in my elbows and I'm imagining that someone's pulling my elbows up as I'm twisting the dumbbells around the back of my glutes. I'm holding the stretch at the top just for a split second. Now can you see how I'm rotating them dumbbells and I'm imagining that my elbows are being pulled rather than my hands. You imagine that your shoulders are tucking in against your ears. So this isn't seen in every gym around the world, but it's an absolutely fantastic piece of cardio equipment. It's called the Stairmaster, and 
it can be absolutely brutal, but so rewarding. You see a lot of professional athletes, particularly bodybuilders, bikini girls, who absolutely love this for the, for the simple fact that it puts a good emphasis on your glutes while you're doing it. So when you do get on this Stairmaster, just press the green button in front of you. What that'll do, it'll release the brake off the revolving staircase. Now, the staircase will move dependent on the user's weight. And all you're going to do is by turning the level up is release the brake a little bit more, which will allow the revolving staircase to revolve that little bit faster. Ashley uses this daily, so she's a seasoned pro on this machine and she loves it. There's various ways you can use it. You can use it a single step at a time, or she could go on a two steps at a time. So now her feet will miss one tread and take two steps up. You could make it even more advanced by doing a glute kickback as you're stepping up the steps. As I said, this is an absolutely amazing piece of kit and if your gym's got one, you're a really lucky person, so make the most of this. Don't be afraid of it. Start off if you can do one minute and then work your way up to two minutes. And what sometimes we do is we'll do a period of time on this and we'll then put somebody off it, back onto the treadmill and then come back on again. So that way they can work the way up to a level. Uh, Ashley's currently doing around about one hour solid on this. Now, myself, I'll probably do about three or four minutes. It's a hard piece of equipment but so rewarding and so, so, so beneficial to anybody. So I would definitely recommend that you definitely give this a go, give it a try, don't be afraid of it. And just to finish this one off, Ashley's gonna turn the speed up and she's gonna show you now how she can get into a run. And just note this fact as well, on this particular Stairmaster, in the top left-hand corner, there's a picture of a fan. If she presses the picture of the fan, that'll blow cold air at her face. So she's gonna get into a run. As you do get more experience on this, you'll be able to leave go of the handles, but I would recommend you always stay within a balance. As you can see now, Ashley's actually into a run where her arms are moving as well. As her arms are moving, she's burning more calories because more parts of her body are moving. Again, once you're finished on the Stairmaster even, again, press the big red button in front of you and that'll apply the brake to the staircase and allow you to safely dismount and move on to the next exercise.